guys um good morning uh so welcome back to the channel uh today i decided to do something different uh you know recently ghana has been full of people leaving the country traveling to this country traveling to that country so you know people are being lied to you know on the other side people are being misinformed on the other side people are being you know um people are basically being misinformed on a lot of things so today, per the research I've done, it, I've decided to tell people about certain things or let me say information. I'm just pouring out information about this whole travel thing. So to begin with, um, you know, people have been traveling to Canada in and out, not just Canada, USA, UK, people have been traveling, basically people have been li leaving the country. So first of all, what we are going to talk about is Canada. First of all, people who are doing this whole Canada move, it's, it's three things. Either you enter Canada through your study um, application, your work application, that's study permits, work permits, or direct work permits. First of all, we'll go like an info video on work permits and student permits, kind of differentiating everything. All right, now what I want to talk about is the work permits, right? People who are being misinformed about how the work thing is in Canada, okay, the information I have is that, um, First of all, before you get a, a work permit, there are certain processes that you need to go through before you get your work permit. Uh, there has to do with LMIA, uh, the employer, I, a lot of things. We'll get into that. But first of all, what I want to hammer on is that um, before you actually get direct to work permit to work in Canada, these are the actual things you need to do. I mean, I don't know about these agents who tell you, go, oh, come and pay this amount of money. We have five years. Um, five years working permits, ten years working permits, whatever. Agents, I mean, they are doing, they are doing their job to earn their money from you, the innocent person. So, if you are able to do certain, you know, research on your own, and then, you know, you can do everything behind your computer. That if you don't have the money, but if you have the money and you want to risk it, cool, that's your own money. So, what I want to say is that first of all, before you get a work visa to work in Canada, like from your home country. You need like a couple of things. And first thing is, people. I mean, we've seen we've seen a lot of videos on social media where people are telling you, "Oh, uh, apply this job on 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 uh, on this particular website. Do uh, apply look for this job." Let me use Ghana as an example. People will do a video and they'll, they'll name it. Um, Move to Ghana in five days. Move to Ghana in seven days. Web permit, this, 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 three years web permit, blah, blah, blah. Yo, bro, all the videos, they are not telling you the truth. You want to move to Canada to go away. First of all, what you have to do is you have to look for the work in Canada, right? Look for what, what you want to do that, you know, relates to the certificates you have. If you don't have any certificates, cool. There are a lot of our still jobs. There's a website, jobrun.ca. Why? He puts that into your browser, I will take you to a Canadian um, site where they posted a lot of Canadian international jobs that you can actually apply for. Now, this is where the truth is. Before you you even go during the process of applying through the job and you know the visa and everything, you look for the job you want, you apply for it, and then you know on the website. They're, they're gonna see they're gonna see the job let's say example i'm a graphic designer i want to go ahead and do a graphic design job outside the country right i look for a graphic design job on the job bank website i click on it the employer details everything is there i mean the number of hours you went the salary you're going to take everything is there then they will leave the email of the employer there so that the email there is what you're going to pick and then apply you're gonna use to apply for the job. So you said, let's say the employer email, oh, I would say this based on the research I have made. So you can also, you know, conduct your own research. Some of them will ask for cover letter, um, recommendation letter, your certificates. Some too wouldn't ask for anything. You just go straight and apply what, whatever you want to attach to it is based on the job or the field you want. Cool. The way the LMI went is that Let's say I'm an employer in Canada. I want to employ somebody from outside the country, outside Canada, let's say Ghana. Before I do that, I need to go to the Canadian government and ask for an LMIA form. 
LLI stands for Labor Market Impact Assessment, and this is a form that employers, government, the Canadian government issues out to employers who want to employ people from international borders, like people from outside Canada. And then, before the employer even considers your application, the Canadian government will make sure that the position they want, let's say I'm an employer, I want a graphic designer, and I want to take my LMI form. Government of Canada will make sure that I say I want, I, I'm saying that I want a, a graphic designer. Am I sure I won't get a graphic designer within Canada? If I'm able to prove to the government that I'm not getting anybody in Canada, so I want to pick somebody outside Canada. If I'm able to prove that to the Canadian government, that is what will make the Canadian government approve the LMI form and then hand it over to me, the employer. So whilst I'm, I'm being handed the LMI forms, it means I can employ somebody outside Canada. That's not all. So fine, I've proved to the government that I have LMI forms. Now I want to employ somebody outside Canada. Then I will post um, the, the, how do I call it? The vacancy and how on the website, that's job, jobbank.ca. I will put the vacancy there. Somebody outside Canada contacts me. Now I have the person's email. I'm going through the email, work through the CV. I like it. Now the visa process has to begin. So now I'm shifting myself from being an employer to being the employee. So let's see, I have sent um, the the email to my employer and my employer has responded, okay, I like your email, I like your CV, blah, 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 okay, this is what I have to do next. So now the employer has to send me the LMI forks that he wanted to take from the Canada government. He has to send the forks to me. And this one, this the forks the employer will send me is what I'm going to input into the IRCC portal. So if you don't know IRCC portal, IRCC portal is like immigration portal for Canada, where you apply for your student uh, visas, work visas, you know, any form of immigration visa, you apply on the IRCC website. So I log on to my IRCC website. I mean, we'll do a separate video of how to log on to your IRCC, how to create an IRCC account and all that. So I log on to my IRCC portal. Instead of going to, going to apply for a student permit, I choose the web permit. They want to ask you, do you have an employer who is ready to employ you? They want to ask you a lot of questions. Once well, you answered all the questions, then we'll do a separate video on that too. Once you've, once you've answered all the questions, then there'll be a part where you input your LMI document. That is the LMI the employer has sent to you. You can put that into the um, the portal, you upload it into the portal, you upload your CV. Um, I mean, there, there are a lot of things you need to upload. I'll, I'll post all in the uh, description below. You upload everything, then you apply for it. And then I think that you're, you're going to pay like 340 Canadian um, dollars or something like that. And then you apply. So once you apply, the, your application gets to the Canadian Immigration. They assess it, they make sure of what the employer is saying and what you, you also say is on the same page. Once the employer, you qualify for the employment and they see that everything looks good, they apply, I mean, they approve the work visa for you. And this is not like something that will happen in seven days, five days, like the online stories are, talk, are telling us about. At the time it takes, it will, it will take a year, it will take three years, it will take three years. That's if you are doing everything. First of all, I don't know the kind of links these agents have. Agents are genius. Agents are like good links that they can get you. They can get you somebody to employ you and then process the LMI, everything within maybe three to four months. Cool. But most people, you see most videos online, get your web visa in one week, two weeks, three weeks. That's where I have a problem with because most people, they are, they are deceiving you. If you are doing a process yourself, it will take some time. If you want somebody to do it for you, you need to know that until this person has done this for somebody and then it has worked. Once you know that, once you know that fact, then you can trust the person and you can risk your money. That's your problem. That's not my problem. So this is like kind of a simple procedure of how, you know, you can work on your own work colleagues from, from house, from, 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 from the comfort of your own home. And the next video, I'll be telling you about how to like create an IRCC account and 
how do you apply for study family? How do you even look for schools online and everything? This is like a seller of everything. They would they do deep. I've done the research, I've done everything, how to create a legal seat, legal standard CD, how to book. I'm here for you, basically. So I'll see you in the next video. Take care, bye bye.